morning everybody, welcome to Mortal Gaming, this is me again, Marvin, and we're now here for another video for Ragnarok Origin, and this hour we're going to be talking about the Rune Knight, but specifically for the sword build, because this is uh, what I currently have started to focus on maybe in the future or if I ever get a hold of an account that is using a spear build then we'll be making a spear build guide okay so for this one we're going to focus on all of the things that you need in order for you to make your sword build strong and sturdy so let's talk about stats okay for pve this is the one that i am using 99 strength 99 agility and 43 luck so in the future maybe i would be putting points on luck on vitality so that i could have more hp on pvp and since most people are still running their gears on counter crit as of the moment then uh it's not going to do that much if we are putting more on luck so we have to put it on more hp so next is for the skill build for our skills i have already revised this and perfected this so that you won't have any any problem for, for the swordsman skill tree until the rune knight skill tree so for the swordsman of course if you are gonna put the first 40 skill points here you're gonna focus on five bash 5 Magnum Break, 10 Sword Mastery, 10 Increased Recovery, and 10 Provoke. For the Knight Skill Tree, we have 1 on Riding, 5 on Cavalier Mastery, 1 on Charge Attack, 5 on Sturdy Strike, 10 on Lion's Roar, 10 on Major Tenacity, and then go back here, put 5 more on uh, Fatal Blow, and 3 on Endure. Now, Let's go to the Lord Knight. We are not going to put Concentration. As you can see, we did not put Concentration. We did not put Sword Quicken. And we did not max out Aura Blade. And we did not even put a lot of skill points on Endure. We're going to explain that later. So 5 on Aura Blade. 5 on Head Crush. 10 on Joint Beat. 5 on Tension Relax. And 5 on Berserk. Then go to go back to Swordsman skill tree and I've put the remaining 10 points here, 5 on Bash and 5 on Magnum Break so that I could max them out. Now, if we're gonna go to the Rune Knight, the reason why we did not put Sword Quicken, the Concentration, and also the Aura Blade is because the full throttle already buffs them up and i have tested this already even though you don't have the skill per se of concentration aura blade or the sword quicken or even endure it's still going to buff you all of this so you don't need to put skill points on all of those skills because it's gonna be a waste instead of putting it everywhere anywhere else so i put five on aura blade because you need it for the enchant blade so let's proceed here we want one on dragon training four on dragon breath fire four on dragon breath water because you don't you cannot uh you know fit every everything here you need 42 a total of 42 skill points so you have to sacrifice two skill points here so i've sacrificed one on dragon breath and one on uh fire and water so one on dragon zion and max dragon howling because the aoe of this skill is superb i really love it then uh, 10 on Enchant Blade and of course 10 on Ignition Break this because this is gonna be your bread and butter for the auto attack build. Then Rune of Mercy, Rune of Nobility and Rune of Faith and then Rune of Courage. So you, you cannot put any of these points here on Fire and Water Dragon Breath since you need the Rune of Courage. We really, really need this, particularly on MVPs. Okay, so this is the skill. On the settings, I am using on my manual slots, full throttle here, then the uh, three Dragon Breaths or Dragon Howling on one, Dragon Zion and Berserk. On the next set of manual slots, we have here the four runes, the Enchant Blade, and the uh, Tension Relax. Okay, you can put other buffs here instead of Tension Relax, but 
I find it uh, useful on some cases when I'm trying to retreat. I do tend to relax and go back to battle. Okay, so that's it. For the auto, I am using the full throttle first, then the enchant blade, then the Zion, and then two of this, two of the uh, breath. So I'm not using the water breath since uh, this one on PvP uh, takes out healing of the enemy. So that's good for me as compared with the water. As compared with the water, it's just movement speed. But if you have already used Dragon Howling, Dragon Howling already reduces the enemy's movement speed. In terms of the elements on PvE, I am pretty much, you know, benefiting from fire. So I'm using this one. So, uh, and the last one is Auto Attack. So let's now talk about the equipment and the gears. For the weapon, of course, we will be using one hand. So that would be the Elemental Sword because the Elemental Sword makes use of your skills in Rune Knight. So Ignition Damage plus 100% and on Refine plus 6, you gain additional 5% to cast, auto cast Ignition Break. That's huge, okay? So next is plus 10. Your Wind Cutter gains 5% chance to double damage. <laughs> wow. And plus on plus 15, when your Enchant Blade is activated, the damage multiplier of your normal attacks, Wind Cutter Ignition Break is increased by 200%. And then last on plus 18, Physical Damage plus 5. Okay? So for the Armors, we are using... The King of Resentment, the reason for this is that we cannot achieve at the moment 500% attack speed with a shield. Obviously, the Charleston Superior Craftsmanship would be better on all cases. You have to take out your shield. As a lazy person like me, I don't like to take my shield and then put it back whenever I need it and just buff, food buff, etc. So I'll just use King of Resentment. But I would be suggesting for those who are hardcore, of course, Charleston Superior Craftsmanship. For the shield, we are using Valkyria's shield because this one is needed particularly on PvP because there's a lot of Warlocks right now and you would need that fire resistance and even your magic damage reduction here if you have it on plus 15. For the accessories, you may use still use the Paranoid of Dark Knight so that uh, your attacks would be increasing your skill damage by 15%. But I am now using the Sig to leave us a set or the uh, for the medals and the wing because this one gives you the Valkyrie's glory, which upon dealing damage with the skill you gain normal attack damage plus three percent and skill damage plus five percent, and it stacks for up to four times. So that's twenty percent increase in skill damage. Not only that you gain also 12% on normal attacks. For the accessory wares, we are using White Lily. For our headgear, I would be suggesting that too because this one is for all around and I really love this uh, chance, 5% chance to grant increased damage, 20% increased damage for 3 seconds. I'm, I'm really loving it so I can see the effect on this one. Next is for face gear, we have Luna Glyph. Lun you would love you Luna Glyph here. Even though it doesn't uh, put in much value on the stats, but when it autocasts, increase agi, increase movement speed, increase attack speed. I love it so you would want that. For the mouth wear, we have the gray mask. Okay, it's all around again. Then for the back where you may use Nightly Emblem. So for the costume, we have the Floral Elf again. And uh, if you want, you can also use the Poker Knight so that you can gain advantage on MVPs. But, you know, Floral Elf pretty much solves it already, okay? For the enchants, I have here a lot of superior crit, but that's not the way to go. You would want melee boon. Here, so the superior crit is just a secondary choice. I still don't have melee here on level six, so as uh, as of the moment, I am using this because it also has strength 
and agility. Now, this one is uh, the one that I am using because it has physical attack 4.5% on both substats. But for here, I already have the melee boon. We don't have level 5 or higher on crit here, so I'm using this one. Okay, for the armor, it's PvE technique on PvE and vitality boost on PvP since you need more HP. You can also use counter crit on PvP. For the shield, it's anti-magic damage because the dawn of the warlock is already coming. So we are now uh, putting less on counter crit and more on anti-magic damage. That goes the same with cloak and for shoes, it's anti physical damage for the headwear and the backwear okay superior physical attack for pve and for pvp it's pvp technique now for face wear and mouth wear it's pve technique for pve and improved physical defense or improved magic defense anywhere you want to go for pvp now for the costume it's pve technique for pve and pvp technique for PvP. Now let's go to the refined priorities. I would be suggesting for you to refine your elemental sword to plus 15 and if you have already that you may want to go for plus 18 on that. Next would be plus 15 on your uh, accessories and then plus 15 on your armors. Okay next for the cards for the weapon I'm using of course the da still the damage modification cards with priorities on size and then race and then element for the armor gears cornutus card is still okay elemental cards are valuable for pve and i would suggest pasana card on pvp for the shield it's gonna be sting to add additional magic damage and alice for pve and for pvp go on thara now for the shoes cards uh, Alarm is really good but Cat O Nine Tail beats everything here because it gives you HP and a chance for you to reflect magic damage. Since a lot of people are using magic damage right now, even Rune Knights, then it's gonna be the best one. Next, for the accessories, I would be suggesting one Aether or Karcher. So since you are still critting here, every crit would be giving you a, an additional damage which is double strafe. So Aether Orc Archer is the best one here. Next would be Greatest General. Then Injustice if you want or you can go for Bongun for additional uh, stun on the enemy. Then Owl Baron and Osiris card. Okay. For the headgear, Cram card is for all around. But if for uh, special PvE or con PvE content like Temple of Nightmare, you may use Marduk and G-Earth. For Juperos and then for PvP Deverucci is still the best and G Earth in my opinion. For the divine traits for the weapon, it's ignore physical defense, PvP damage bonus, physical attack, and PvE damage bonus. For the armors and garments, PvP damage reduction or PvP damage reduction, PvE damage reduction. You may go for P death or physical death, magic death, or even HP percent. For the shield, you may go for physical defense, magic defense, magic damage reduction, and HP percent. For the shoes, movement speed is very important. Magic defense also, HP percent, and magic damage reduction. Okay? For sigils, for the active, I would be suggesting either Primal or Zephyr. If you have Zephyr, it's going to be helpful. And for PvP, it's always Shield. For the passives, Impale for the high tier uh, players out there. Meteor, Chosen One is awesome. I really love oh, Chosen One, particularly if it uh, gives you the buff. Uh, if it gives you movement speed buff, that's good. Berserk. And Immortal Body. That's for PvE. For PvP, you need Surging Protection, Deadlock Aurora, Immortal Body, and Swift Breakout. For the Cogwheels, let's go to the Cogwheels. Furious Attack. Okay, 
I have used this and I have compared it with Divine Empowerment. I just realized that Furious Attack is only available on Smeldon Cogwheels. For the first uh, time, I found it underwhelming, but when I got the hang of it in terms of the combo, I'm really loving it already. So this one stacks physical attack, ma movement speed, crit damage for up to 5 times whenever you are on Berserk. And it lessens the, the cooldown of Berserk by 10 seconds and improves the duration by 10 seconds. So instead of 15 second duration, it will be up for 25 seconds. And instead of 60 seconds of cooldown, you only have 10 seconds of cooldown. So it's a total of 25 second cooldown, which is not bad, particularly on MVPs. Aside from that, you may want Divine Empowerment on your Smeldon also. That's a lot. The Dauntless Order, the Charged Attack is also so good, okay? The Charged Attack. I wish I would have gotten this one, but this one is really good because you can easily increase your attack speed by adding up a little bit of momentum management on your cores and your your skills and normal attacks deal additional 18% more damage. That's a lot! For just 20% sacrifice on your attack speed, so you may also get core overload and last, as I've told you guys, momentum management. For the Matrix engine or Nexus engine, we have here Wind Cutter because Wind Cutter is the one that you have to uh, prioritize. It increases the damage of Wind Cutter by 40% and increases your attack speed when you are on under Dragon Zion by 20%. Next priority is the Fire Breath. This one is gonna cancel almost all of the healing on your enemy and that's gonna be a lot on PvP and then also the Ignition Break for your third choice, alright? So that's it. Thank you everybody for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. If you haven't liked this video, please do leave a like. Share this to your fellow RK Rune Knights out there and to your friends. And click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video, start a new stream, or a new content. That's it. See you again on the next video. Bye-bye!